JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 29th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, uh, the US dollar traded lower against all the other G10 currencies on Thursday and during the Asian morning Friday. It lost the most ground against NOC, SEC, Aussie and the Euro in that order, while it underperformed the list versus the Canadian dollar, the Japanese yen and Kiwi. The weakening of uh, the dollar combined with the fact that the yen was among the main losers suggests that the risk appetite remained supported for another day. However, the risk-linked uh, Kiwi was also among uh, the currencies that gained the least versus the greenback, which uh, points otherwise. Thus, in order to clear things up with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, uh, major EU indices continued climbing north, perhaps staying supported by the EU Commission's proposal with regards to a 750 billion euros fund to support the Union's economies battered by the coronavirus uh, crisis. That said, risk appetite softened uh, during the US session, with all three of Wall Street's main indices ending the session in the red. The subdued uh, morale rolled over into the Asian session today as well, with uh, Japan's Nikkei and Hong Kong's Hang Seng sliding 0.29 and 0.54% respectively. Currently, China's Shanghai Composite is up only 0.15%. It seems that investors decided to adopt a more cautious approach, locking some profits, as US President Trump said he will hold a news conference on China today. Yesterday, the world's second largest economy proceeded with the passing of the national security legisl legislation on Hong Kong, and it remains to be seen what, uh, what uh, the, US's, the US's response will be. If, Trump's, uh, if Trump decides to proceed with uh, mild action, like uh, travel and or financial sanctions on, on, Chinese, on Chinese officials, we don't expect equities to tumble much. Actually, we would uh, expect them to rebound at some point soon, perhaps next week, as investors may turn their attention back to the easing of the lockdown measures and the possibility of the global economy restarting its, en its engines. Now, in case uh, the U.S.'s response is a bolder one, like scrapping the Phase 1 trade deal and or imposing uh, fresh tariffs, the slide in risk assets could be larger, bringing into question further recovery in the broader sentiment. Now, back to the currencies. The euro continued uh, marching higher against its uh, U.S. counterpart. Uh, excuse me, against its uh, US counterpart, staying supported by the EU's Commission's plans and also taking advantage of the dollar's uh, tumble. As for today, though, Euro traders may pay some attention to Eurozone's preliminary inflation data for May. The headline rate is forecast to have slid to 0.1% year over year from 0.3%, while no forecast is available for the core one. The HICP, excluding energy and food year-over-year -year rate, is anticipated to have stayed unchanged at 1.1%. Now, bearing in mind that both uh, Germany's CPI and HICP rates slid notably yesterday, we would see the risks uh, at least surrounding the headline rate as tilted to the downside. When they last met, ECB policymakers eased their conditions of the TLTROs and introduced a new series of non-targeted pandemic emergency long-term ref refinancing operations called PELTROs and stayed ready to adjust all of their instruments as appropriate to ensure that inflation moves towards their aim in a sustained manner. 
Last Thursday, the preliminary PMIs for the month rebounded by more than anticipated, but stayed well below the boom or bust zone of 50, keeping the door for further stimulus wide open. Thus, with that in mind, we believe that further slowdown in Eurozone inflation, or perhaps a deflationary print, may increase the chances for the ECB to adopt additional easing measures and or to expand the existing ones, perhaps as early as at uh, next week's gathering. Something like that could prove negative for the euro, but the broader direction in euro dollar may depend on uh, Trump's response to China. If it's uh, soft to one, any slight uh, due to eurozone's inflation data may be treated as a corrective setback before the next leg higher. In order to start examining a negative uh, reversal, we would like to see a switch to risk off, something that could uh, benefit the safe haven dollar. This could happen if Trump scales back any progress made so far in finding common ground over trade with China. Now, another important release on today's agenda is Canada's GDP for March and for the first quarter as a whole. The monthly rate for March is expected to have tumbled to minus 9% from 0%, which will drive the quarter over quarter annualized rate down to minus 10% from 0.3%. At its prior gathering, the Bank of Canada announced an expansion of its QE purchases, while last week inflation data for April missed estimates with the headline rate falling to minus 0.2% year over year. Although this may have been due to the collapse in oil prices, combined with an, uh, with an unprecedentedly low GDP print, it may increase speculation for more easing by the Bank of Canada and thereby bring the Canadian dollar under some, under some selling interest. That said, conditional upon further recovery in the broader market sentiment, we would treat such a slide as a correction before, before another leg of buying, especially against uh, the safe havens like the US dollar and the yen. Now, as uh, for today, as for the rest of today's uh, events, in the US we have personal income and spending for April, as well as the core PCE rate uh, for the same month. Personal income is expected to have fallen 8.3% month over month after sliding 2% in March, while spending is anticipated to have tumbled 9.7% month over month after falling 7.5%. That said, we would consider the risks of the income rate as tilted to the upside, and this is because the average hourly earnings for the month jumped 4.7%. With regards to spending, we would consider a larger than expected decline as retail sales for the month dropped 16.4% month over month. With regards to the year-over-year -year core PC rate, which is the Fed's inflation, uh, with the, which is the Fed's favorite inflation metric, it is expected to have fallen to 1.1% year over year from 1.7%. The case for a notable decline in the core PC rate is supported by the core CPI rate which uh, dropped 1.4% year over year from 2.1%. Now with the Fed uh, showing willingness to ease its policy further if needed, a notable slide in the core PC index may add uh, to the chances of uh, more stimulus. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.